Welcome to White Pearl Wednesdays, Real Talk with a Real Tour. I'm Sharice Wynn, also known as the Agent Lady. And have you ever thought about moving a wall? Well, this might be the video for you. We're actually gonna go over and talk to Dan Banks, who's a structural engineer, and he is gonna tell us all about it. Let's go. Hi everyone, I am here with Dan Banks, and he is a structural engineer, Dan Banks PE. Do I have yes, that correct? Yes, Dan Banks PE, right. So a lot of times, Dan, I will get people who say, oh, I want to, they, they see this house that they love, but they want a more open floor concept. And like, I really want to open up this kitchen. I want to take down this wall. Can I remove this wall? Are you the yes. guy to come out and take a look at that for them? I do that all the time. Okay, tell us about it. So what, what are we looking for if well, we want to remove that wall? A lot of times the kitchen is small and the dining room is small and they want to open it up so they can make a, a gigantic, gigantic kitchen with a, uh, with a, uh, stand in, in, in the middle the island, and have right. places where they can eat and they and it can entertain people right but there's a wall between the two rooms <laughs> yeah so we take a look at the at the wall and by looking at the direction of the joist that is the load bearing members at the floor above we can tell whether that is a load bearing wall or a non-load bearing wall if the joists which are the load bearing members frame into that wall it is a load bearing wall because it's carrying the load of a second floor joist of the uh, of the dining room and also of the kitchen so are you telling are you able to tell this from the basement or what do you like no i see it from the second floor the second floor and you can tell by looking at the directionality that the floor joists go now if the second floor has a uh, carpet on it mm -hmm. Uh, we have to pull back the carpeting. Okay. Or if it's hardwood flooring, the hardwood flooring usually runs in the same direction as the joist because the subfloor runs perpendicular to the joist. So you have the joist, you have the subfloor, and you have the finished floor. So looking at the finished floor, you know the direction of the joist. Very interesting, unless it's one of those contractors that kind of does things backwards. <laughs> but well, so the contractors know the same thing that I'm telling you. Right, right. They, they Otherwise, they that. wouldn't be in business. Well, then maybe, yeah, maybe when Uncle Bob did it and he wasn't supposed to. But other than that, it's supposed to go in a certain direction. So let's just say if it's not load bearing, then it's real easy. Just knock the and wall down. You just down. knock it out. Oh. An hour and a half, two hours with a guy with a sledgehammer. <laughs> Sounds like a good time. Yes, fun. I had, a, I had a plumber who loved to do that. Right, right. Now, the question is, if it's load bearing, then what? What do you do? We have to, pr you have to support okay. the joists before you take out the wall. Because if you take out the wall, the joists will fall down. Right. So therefore, on either side, you are putting up shoring. What is shoring? These are cross members of usually four by four or six by six members with as seal columns that mm -hmm. hold it, they're called lolly columns, and you support the joists until you take down the wall. But before you take down the wall, I come in and take a look at what kind of loads mm -hmm. that that wall is supporting. I calculate the, the loads that that wall is supporting, and there are three, depending upon the, the span that you have, I can use either a double two by 10 joists or two by 12 joists, or use engineering, uh, engineered wood, which are called paralams. They are um, uh, wood that's been dipped in epoxy or fabricated with epoxy, which is 50% uh, greater in stiffness than wood okay. and can carry two and a half times the load of wood. Is that more so expensive? That it's more expensive, okay. but it's shallower. Right. So as a result, you can use it. In the, and that is used now, but span is very wide. Like you have some of these houses in, in, in the suburbs where the span is more than 20 feet. Right. What you may have to use is a steel beam. Oh, right. So I we see use that. a steel beam. That's not a problem. The steel beam will sit on the brick wall on this side, and sit on a brick wall on the other side, and you frame it with uh, wood. Right. And you can't see it after it's been framed out and everything is nicely painted and it looks very, very nice. It's not, it looks nice, but this sounds expensive, Dan. Like to remove a wall, like what are we looking at? I mean, what's your Removing fee? Removing a typically? my fee is $525 for what I've just told you. Okay, and then the contractor, if you had to estimate, which The charge? contractor, it depends upon time and material. Right. How much time he has to spend and how much material he has to put in. Okay. The material is usually a couple of hundred dollars. But the time? The time. So what And this, these contractors are working at $75 an hour. Okay. So they're working, say, if they're working uh, 10 hours, $750. How many hours are you working? 20 hours? Probably that. 
it's fifteen hundred dollars plus he puts down um, overhead and profit and everything else so he might charge two to three thousand maybe four thousand dollars but a lot of these contractors have prices all over the place right so you have to get an idea as to what he charges right. and, and talk to three good contractors a ask around right. uh, uh, of the local township ask around of the local uh, uh, inspector and find out who's a good contractor and get a price from him well thank you so much dan we appreciate you thank you thank you for um participating in the show and remember guys friends don't let friends buy or sell real estate without the agent lady make it a great day